the one I believe to be the greatest soldier of all time. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. You're here this morning because God in His providence and His divine providence understood and knew that this moment would come in your life, that this day would come, that at this very moment that your life would intersect with Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in verse number 13 of John 15. Verse 13 of John 15. The Bible tells us, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. I believe in Jesus Christ is encapsulated everything that is necessary to be a good soldier. The Bible tells us, as Paul wrote in the book of 2 Timothy, that the desire of every Christian should be to please Him who hath chosen us to be a soldier. As we read that verse and we think about the great responsibility that we have to be soldiers for Jesus Christ, we also recognize this, that God has never asked us to do something that He was unwilling to do Himself. That Jesus Christ has never required of us something that He was not willing to exemplify in and of Himself. As we look at Jesus Christ, we understand if you read this chapter, you'll find that your success and my success in life is solely determined by our attachment to Jesus Christ. Can I say that again? Your success in life, and can I go beyond that, our success in eternity is only determined by our attachment to Jesus Christ. Look at the very first verse of chapter 15. What does he say? I am the vine, and ye are the branches. If you read a little bit further down in verse number 4, he says, Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Again in verse 5, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. We understand in the Christian life that the only success that we can have is the success that we find in Jesus Christ. There are many people that are living in a world today, and by living in a world, I mean living in their world. They're living in their own little world believing that my success is determined based upon what I accomplish, what I achieve, what I attain. And the fact of the matter is, is that Jesus reminds us over and over again in Scripture that without me, ye can do nothing. He reminds us of that here in John 15. That without being attached to Him, we can do nothing. We accomplish nothing. We produce nothing. I'm thankful in my life for the day that I met Jesus Christ as my Savior. I'm thankful for the day that I realized that I was lost without Jesus Christ. You say, Pastor, what does that mean to be lost? The Bible says that when, when a person is born into this world, every one of us are born into this world sinners. As by one man sinner into the world, death by sin. So death passed upon all men, for that all is sinned. I was born in this world a sinner. But I recognize at the age of 13 that without Christ, I was not only born a sinner, but I would die a sinner. And to die without Jesus Christ is, is to spend eternity separated from God forever. Someone says, Pastor, how could a God who loves people create a place like hell? Can I remind you that hell was never intended for people. It was intended for the devil and his demons. And the Bible tells us, though, as we reject God, as we reject Jesus Christ, we die in our sin. And to be separated from God for all of eternity by the truth of God's Word is to be separated from Him in a place called hell. Can I say to you this morning that God doesn't desire that anyone go to hell? God doesn't desire that you go to hell. And at the age of 13, I realized that I was not only born a sinner, but that I would die a sinner without Jesus Christ. That wonderful verse that many of us know by memory in John chapter number 3, verse number 16, For God so loved the world 
that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Can I tell you, God loves all men. God loves all men. I don't care where you're from, where you were born, what kind of family you grew up in, what your heritage is, what your race is. It does not matter. God loves all men. And all men must be saved. I realized that without Jesus Christ, I was not only born a sinner, but I was going to die a sinner and spend eternity separated from God forever. And I was told, according to the scriptures, that Jesus Christ came to this earth. That he lived 33 and a half years, he ministered for three and a half years, and the Bible says he was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. You see, the sacrifice on the cross had to be a sinless sacrifice. And the Bible reminds us that he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus Christ took our place when he died on a cross. I think about those soldiers that go overseas. I think about those families who are separated from loved ones. Those that stood just a moment ago representing those that have given the ultimate price. I think about the sacrifice that had to be made so freedom would endure. But the Bible tells us of Jesus that when He died for our sin, when Jesus Christ sacrificed for you and for me, it only took one death. You see, many have died for some, but only one died for all. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, He died for the sins of anyone who, was, who had ever lived, who was living, or who would ever live. And by Himself, the Bible says, He purged our sin. He hung on a cross. They mocked Him and ridiculed Him. Scripture tells us that He was not even recognizable as a human being when He died. But He did that so that you and I could be saved. The only success that you will ever find in life or in eternity is the success that you find attached to the one that died for you. The Bible tells us greater love hath no man than this. We see the service of the Lord Jesus Christ as we think about His love for us. Everyone, everyone wants to be loved. Someone penned a song one time, it was a, a while back, but what the world needs now is love. Can I say to you, the world got love when they got Jesus. Amen. Everyone wants to feel love. Everyone wants to, wants to know that they're loved. And can I say to you, the Bible says there's no greater love than the love that's found in Jesus. Greater love hath no man than this. We see His service for us, His willingness to go where we could not go. Can I remind you, friend, you couldn't die for yourself. No matter how much, Dad, you love those children, you love your wife, you couldn't die to save them eternally. Mom, you could not die to save those children. Why? Because we're sinful. We're sinful men. But Jesus Christ was willing to go where we could not go. He was willing to die when we could not die. He took our place when we could not in and of ourselves do anything. He served us. The Bible reminds us often that Jesus was a servant, but there's no greater picture of, of that serving than being willing to go when we could not go and doing for those who could not do for themselves. We see His sacrifice. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life. For his friend. Jesus not only went to the cross for you, Jesus died for you. The Bible says he went as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep to the shears. He was despised, rejected, ridiculed, mocked, and made fun of, and scripture records, yet he opened not his mouth. And I can't help but imagine that at every step that Jesus Christ took up Golgotha, that step must have been taken with you and me in mind. Because at any moment he'd so desired, he could have called a legion of angels. At any moment he so desired, he could have spoken and everything could have ceased. At any moment, he could have changed what the reality was. But the fact is, he thought of you and me. 
He understood we could not die for ourselves. And he died for us. Jesus Christ died for you. He had to die because of our sin. He was sent to die because God loves us. And when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he paid the price for every sin that would ever be committed. He not only died, he was buried. And on the third day rose again, according to the scriptures. There have been many who claim to be the Messiah. There have been many who have claimed to be God. There are many who have claimed to offer freedom and salvation. But the fact is, that is only found in one. The only one who ever lived and died and rose again. Jesus Christ died for you. He sacrificed for you. He took your place. It should have been you. It should have been me. But Jesus Christ died for us. He was buried and rose again. And He waits for you. You see, we see the service of the Lord. We see the sacrifice of our Lord. But here's the sermon this morning. What are you going to do with what Jesus did for you? What are you going to do with it? There are many people who may be sitting in this room this morning and say, Pastor Brian, I've never, I've never even heard the story of the gospel. I don't know what it means to know Jesus Christ as my Savior. I don't know what it means to trust the Lord. I don't know what it means to know for sure I'm going to heaven. I'm not certain. Well, can I say, first of all, I'm glad you're here. I'm so thankful you're under the sound of my voice this morning. Because what I am saying, not because it comes from me or it become, because it comes from a church, but because it comes from the very words of God, there's hope. And my friend, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior, here's what Jesus says to you. One word, come. Come that you might have life. Come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Stop trying to fix it on your own. Stop trying to take care of things on your own. Stop trying to say, I'm going to get my life straightened out, then I'm going to give it to Jesus. My friend, it doesn't work that way. Give it to Jesus. Come to Him. Come. Come. He invites you. Anyone who dies separated from God, anyone who dies without Jesus Christ and is separated from God for all of eternity will do so for one reason, because they rejected the gospel. They rejected Jesus Christ. Come. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Come. The Philippian jailer cried out, Lord, what must I do to be saved? And Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. For with the mouth confession is made. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. If you'll come to Christ, he can change your life. But you must come. You must come to him. You can sit in that chair and come to Jesus Christ. You can bow your head and get on your knees at this altar and come to Jesus Christ. You can sit in your car and come to Jesus Christ. I beg you this morning, if you do not know Him, come to Him. Trust Him as your Lord and Savior. Put your faith and trust in Him. Stop trusting everything else and trust Him alone. You say, Pastor Brian, you don't know where I'm at. You don't know how bad I've been. You don't know what's gone on in my life. And guess what? I don't need to know. Because the God that already knows has already offered forgiveness. If you'll come. Jesus not only commands us to come, but to those who know Jesus Christ as Savior, He commands us to go. So Christian, here's my question to you. To whom have you shared the gospel? To whom have you told the story of Jesus? To whom have you been a witness? To the greatest soldier to ever live. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Some have died for many, but only one could die for all. Jesus died for you. If you don't know him, come. Remember I said at the beginning of the service, God knew today in this moment that your life and my life 
would intersect with the gospel at this day. God knows what he's doing. He's crying to you. He's calling to you. He is showing you your need. Will you come to him? How many of us as Christians? I would say to you this morning, there were many people. Uh, I saw a video just recently of the greatest play in Major League Baseball history. It was a play with a center fielder for the, uh, my mind just went blank, the New York Yankees. I can't remember his name. Was it the Yankees? The guy tried to set the flag on fire. And he ran. Say it again? Yeah, Rick Monday. My mind went, it's Sunday. That's why I couldn't remember his name. All right. <laughs> the folks ran out on the field and he took the flag. They tried to light it on fire and he took the flag and ran off with it. They said it was the greatest play in Major League Baseball history. I, I would tend to agree with them. Yeah. There are many people who, who have the right to do many things, but just because you have the right to do it doesn't mean you should. That same right that you're claiming to possess was paid with someone else's sacrifice. And I have to be a little bit forward here. You can exercise all kinds of rights, but don't, don't burn the flag in front of me. Don't discredit or discount or ridicule the soldiers in front of me. Don't do that in front of me. I've taught my sons when they see soldiers in uniform to walk up to them, look them in the eye and shake their hand and tell them thank you. Because they would not have the freedom that they enjoy and I would not have the freedom that I enjoy without the sacrifice of others. I'm thankful for that sacrifice. I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for this nation. But I promise you this. You would trade all of what you possess in America. You would trade it all to have one more moment in life to receive Jesus Christ if you die without Him. Come to Him. Come to, come to the Lord. And Christian, go. Go. If you walked in this church and you begin to stomp on the flag, I, I, I wouldn't be able to get to you because there'd be enough people between me and you that take care of that. Amen. Amen. And we would look at that and go, don't do that in my presence. Don't act that way. Don't do that. We'd be very, very, very convicted and, and respond with conviction. But yet how often do us who've been commanded to go stomp on the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for us? Ah, it's unimportant. Sharing the gospel with others, living the Christian life, honoring the Lord with our, with our actions, our attitudes, our activities. Those things, that, that doesn't matter. That's unimportant. And you know what we do every time we do that? We stomp on the flag of salvation. God says to come, but He also says go. If you know Jesus Christ as Savior, don't, don't disrespect what God has done for you by living a life detached from Him. Be where God wants you to be. Do what God wants you to do and live the life God intends you to live. Why did the Bible say that I, in Scripture here, I'm the vine and you're the branches? Why did God tell us that? Because without God, there's no fruit in our life. There's our own fruit. You know what it produces? Misery, shame, sin, hurt, heartache, toil, struggles. But when we're attached to the vine, we produce God's fruit in our life. The one soldier that sacrificed all for all was the one that died at Calvary and invites you to come. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed this morning. I want to ask the pianist to come to the piano and play a verse of invitation. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. 
I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. You're here this morning, you say, Pastor Brian, I'm not certain. I don't know this Jesus. I don't know Jesus. I've never trusted him as my Savior. I've never asked him to be my Lord. I don't know what it means to know I'm going to heaven. I'm not certain if I died right now or the Lord were to come. I'm not certain that I'd spend eternity with Jesus Christ. I don't know for sure that Jesus Christ is my Savior, but I'd like to know. I don't know for sure I'm going to heaven, but I'd like to know how to go. I'd like to know how to go to heaven. I'd like to make that choice today. I'd like to trust Jesus Christ as my Savior. You say, that's me, Pastor. I'm not sure, but I'd like to choose Jesus today. If that's you, no one's going to come to you. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, and no one's looking around. You say, that's me. I'd like to choose Jesus today. If that's you, just slip your hand up. No one's going to come to you. I just want to pray for you. That's all I want to do. I'd like to choose Jesus. Just slip your hand up and put it right back down. Is there anyone like that? Is God speaking to your heart? I'd like to choose Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. The moments we've been given to live are the most important moments to live for Jesus. If you realize in your heart that Jesus Christ died for you, that you're a sinner, that He died for you, and you'll put your faith and trust in Him, you'll call on Him and ask Him to be your Savior, God has promised that He'll save you. And for all of eternity, you'll be grateful for the service, the sacrifice, and the sermon that was given in this moment. Christians, how many of us are this morning are convicted by being more proud to be an American than we are to be a Christian. We're more voiceful, we're more vocal about our patriotism than we are our passion for Jesus Christ. You're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I'm gonna do all I can for the Lord because I know He did everything for me. And I want God to help me to live my life for Him. You say, I want God to help me to live my life for Him. If that's your prayer, no one's going to come to you. But you mean that this morning. Would you lift your hand and say, I want to live my life for the Lord. Just slip it up. Say, I want to live my life for Jesus. Hands raised all around. God bless you so much. If we would take that to heart and truly let it change us. We could change our communities. We could change our homes change our churches if we just commit to living for Jesus let's stand to our feet please our heads are bowed our eyes are closed if God spoke to your heart there's an altar to come to if you need someone to pray with you I'll meet you right here and someone will take the time to pray with you there are those that are already coming if God spoke to your